let's turn our attention to the phones. And as I pointed out time and time again, IllinoisPolicy.org is a website that you guys should bookmark and, and visit frequently because they have got so much great Illinois-centric material up there. And the thing I like about them is they'll tell you what is wrong and tell you all the things that are wrong with it and then tell you how they believe you should fix it. So they're not just throwing bricks through windows and going, all right, well, uh, this is wrong. Somebody did something wrong and then walk away. They've got ideas on how to make things better. And one of the guys we always lean on for the latest and best information is Adam Schuster, who's Senior Director of Budget and Tax Research with Illinois Policy. Adam, good morning. Morning, Riley. Thanks for having me back. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you back on again. Uh, you had a great piece in the uh, Chicago Sun-Times that came out. Well, when did you write that? August 26th, this came out. And uh, headline reads, how Illinois finances fell apart and how we can set them right. See, this is an example of what I'm talking about. They'll point out what's wrong and then what we can go about and fix it. You have got some information in this piece. Um, uh, you have a little Illinois pension history that you give via bullet point. Some of the stuff in there is literally jaw-dropping, Adam. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's also a piece on the website that, that goes into detail on, on those facts as well, the, you know, the history of it. But in particular, how Mike Madigan, the longest-serving Speaker of the House, has been instrumental in every bad decision along the way that led to the downfall of Illinois' credit, to the creation of its mountain of debt, and to this web of corruption uh, that costs our economy, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars per year. And um, so what we're seeing is, you know, currently the federal government is investigating Mike Madigan. They're sort of circling. There's growing calls for his resignation. Uh, and, you know, if the speaker ends up leaving power, if this ends up being, you know, the, the, the time uh, to say goodbye to Mike Madigan, it represents an opportunity uh, for Illinoisans not only to see, you know, a, a change in the speakership, but to undo uh, all the bad policy that he's left us with over the years. You, uh, you point out here that in 1980, which is uh, right about the time uh, Mike Madigan jumped aboard, give or take, uh, Illinois had a four had $4.5 billion in unfunded pension debt, and we had a perfect credit rating. Today, $140 billion in unfunded pension debt, and credit rating is just one notch above junk status. That's right. And, you know, uh, when Illinois was that AAA rated state, there was only 12 states there with us. Illinois had sterling credit. We were, you know, a, a fairly, uh, you know, well-managed state with, with manageable debt burdens. And then, you know, for the next 30 years, Mike Madigan uh, promised pension benefits that taxpayers couldn't afford, uh, refused to fund them uh, at the time. So he just built up mountains of debt and kicked the can down the road and delayed paying for those benefits. And it's absolutely destroyed uh, not only our, our credit rating, but the state's economy because this pension uh, debt burden that Madigan has built. And he's worked with, you know, other governors of both parties and, and other uh, elected officials to build it. But he's been the, the constant along the way. Um, and this, this pension uh, crisis is, is the driving force behind our first in the nation property taxes, which drives our, you know, high overall tax burden. And it's what's driving residents and businesses to flee to other states. Yeah, I was going to say, that also is a key contributor to uh, leading the Midwest in outbound migration, I would think. That's exactly right. If You you know, you tra you can trace all of these uh, kind of core problems that Illinois is facing back to the pension crisis, because the pension crisis is the reason our taxes are so high. It's the reason our government isn't spending money on things people actually want and need, because more than a quarter of the budget gets sucked up by pensions. It's, it's crazy. Talk about what happened here in 1989 when you, you talk about the past legislation without an actuarial cost estimate. Yeah, so uh, another um, uh, Madigan staple is when they hand these benefits out, uh, they do it without an actuarial cost estimate. And actuaries are sort of the pension experts, uh, they're neutral accountants who are supposed to tell you what it's going to cost in the long term, you know, how you can afford it, do all those types of financial projections. Uh, back in 1989, Madigan was the sponsor of the legislation that created the 3% compounding, I call it a post-retirement raise because it's not really a cost of living adjustment because it's not tied to inflation. Um, but that's one of the, the core drivers of our pension debt. Madigan put that in place in uh, 89. It took effect in uh, 91. Um, but not only that, that, that same bill also spiked politicians' pensions in various ways by allowing them to switch to more generous benefits without paying for, you know, the difference in costs to their contributions. It allowed the governor and the chief sponsor of that legislation and the Senate to spike 
uh, their pensions. Um, and, you know, of course, the benefits weren't paid for. Uh, so just a few years later, in, in 1994, he helped Jim Edgar, the then Republican governor, come up with this, uh, you know, this backloaded payment ramp where payments would be very low while Edgar was in office and for, for the next several years for Madigan. And then they raised uh, dramatically for the, for the next governors after him. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, a lot of it, uh, it goes it goes right back to uh, to Madigan's lap and all that. And some might uh, look at it as being Democrat bashing, but uh, you know, Jim Edgar deserves a, a good chunk of credit for this too. That's right, Jim Edgar, as well as uh, Governor Thompson. He was the one who signed that legislation that uh, not only added the three percent compounding cola, which is you know, the major driving force behind the, the unaffordability of these benefits, but it also spiked his own pension, uh, and it was one of the last things he did on his way out the door. Wow, just just amazing. We uh, rank as, as at least the sixth highest tax state, the second most indebted, and the second most corrupt. Uh, corruption costs the Illinois economy an estimated $556 million a year and $10.6 billion between 2000 and 2018. These are cartoonishly large numbers. They're, they're absolutely uh, insane numbers. And, you know, the, so the, you just mentioned the cost of corruption, you know, nearly $10 billion uh, taken out of everyday Illinoisans' pockets in, in lost jobs, lost income growth. But, you know, we were talking about the out-migration crisis earlier, and we've looked at that as well. And if Illinois had just kept pace with the national average in population growth, uh, the state government would be bringing in uh, $3.4 billion dollars more in income tax revenue from all the extra people that would be here, which, by the way, is more than uh, Governor Pritzker's progressive income tax is supposed to bring in. So if we hadn't been you know, spending decades of bad policy driving people out, we wouldn't even be having to talk about another tax hike right now. Which, yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that uh, that uh, that fair tax or whatever you want to call it, progressive tax that the, uh, the, the governor uh, would like to see pass through is really, uh, they're, they're really ramping up the advertising on this one. Yeah, they're, they're definitely uh, ramping up the advertising, and unfortunately that means uh, ramping up the misinformation. Um, but, you know, to kind of bring it all back to, to what we were talking about, what this amendment is really about is whether or not you trust Mike Madigan. Uh, it's about whether or not you want to give more taxing power to Mike Madigan Springfield, uh, you know, who's done all the things we were just talking about for decades and decades, built this huge mountain of debt, this web of corruption. Do you want to give him more power to set income tax rates, more power to pick and choose who pays how much in taxes, or should we keep the flat tax protection that makes it harder for them to raise taxes on everybody? Boy, I wish I was the only one who had to vote on this one because I know which direction I'd go on this. Uh, with all of these things that are wrong, as, as I pointed out, uh, you know, you're, you're always there with, with suggestions on how we can make things better, and that's uh, you even point that out in the piece that uh, is, is up in the Sun-Times and at IllinoisPolicy.org, how we can set them right. All right, what what uh, what maneuvers do we undertake first? Well, I'll give you uh, three things. The first one would be uh, we've got to amend the pension clause, and that doesn't have to mean getting rid of it entirely, but we need to amend the clause so that reasonable uh, changes to the future growth and benefits can be made so we can make the pension system affordable for taxpayers and sustainable for the retirees who are counting on it. If I can uh, interrupt for just a half second, yeah. you're not saying that people who had already been promised this and uh, had, had worked and, and, and been at their job for a long time have a, a change in their benefits. What you're saying is going forward with, with, uh, with what new hires, for lack of a better term. Uh, well, this so there, this is a little bit different than new hires. So what we're talking about would be it would change benefits for, for uh, current workers and potentially for retirees, but it wouldn't cut any of the benefits they're already receiving. So well, what I could tell you is if you're a retiree uh, receiving a check, you'll never see that go down. And if you're a current worker and you log on to the state retirement portal and see how much your monthly check would be today, that amount will never go down. But those amounts might grow more slowly going forward through things like changing the COLA so it's tied to inflation or for some of the the largest pensions who've been collecting for the longest time, they might have a few years where they where their COLA is frozen to allow uh, past benefits to catch up to inflation, but nobody's going to see an actual cut in their benefit. And if you did this plan, you could preserve the core benefits uh, of the retirees while also saving the state about $2 billion per year and fully and putting us on a path to responsibly and fully eliminating the pension debt. Outstanding. So pension reform, uh, number one, uh, number upper, one upper case, reform. uppercase in bold in this one. Yeah, and that's uh, don't don't forget that Mike Madigan's one of his first actions in politics was he was a delegate to the 1970 Constitutional Convention and voted in favor of that pension clause. So so fixing that problem in some way would be wiping Illinois' slate clean of Mike Madigan's uh, legacy. 
Um, another way that we need to do that is through changing the House rules. So Speaker Madigan has near unilateral power to decide whether bills get called for a vote at all, when they get called for a vote. Oftentimes he'll swap out the members of committees ahead of time in order to change who's voting on a bill in committee so he can ensure that it passes or fails depending on how he feels about the legislation. And uh, these rules, the House rules, the procedures that give him these powers um, are, are fundamentally a breakdown in the representative process because if you aren't a taxpayer living in Mike Madigan's district, you don't have the same representation uh, that people who living in Mike Madigan's district are getting because one man has so much power and so much control. So we need to change those rules to give power back to the people's representatives so that everybody uh, has an equal chance to debate and influence legislation. This that is, would be number two. Okay, and, uh, and before we get to number three, because we're right up yeah. against the clock, I, I'm, I'm curious, yeah. if, if Mike Madigan does end up vacating a position and all that, does that create a vacuum where whoever goes in there just basically is a continuation of what he's had going on, or do you see that the, there might be people in yeah. the party who've decided, you know what, we need to go another direction, enough is enough? Well, I think we, we, we need to make sure the latter happens. And I think what that's going to require is it's going to require engaged taxpayers and concerned residents of Illinois and watchdogs and interest groups like ours who, who watch that process and see who takes over and see the rules that they put in place uh, for whoever the next speaker would be in that situation because we don't want uh, a continuation of Mike Madigan's rule. We don't want him to sort of just hand down the keys to the empire. Uh, it needs to be an opportunity for people to stand up and take back their state and, and change the these, these broken power structures that the speaker has been using to, to, to frankly abuse residents and taxpayers for decades now. Yeah, where one guy from one small district basically decides everything in the entire state. That's right. Yeah, wow, yeah. You guys are going to want to read this. Get over to IllinoisPolicy.org. The uh, piece is Madigan's Fiscal Legacy, How the Longest-Serving State House Speaker Built Illinois' Mountain of Debt. Adam Schuster is your author, and of course, he, he is the director, senior director of budget and tax research with Illinois Policy. Adam, as always, it's always enlightening talking to you. I really appreciate your time. We'll look forward to our next get-together. Thank you so much.